My name is Ben Sloan. Um, I really wanted to talk about a topic that I think is popping all up on all of our minds, uh, especially in media, especially the tools that we're using with our work to do our daily jobs. And it's in this realm of artificial intelligence. And I wanted to break this up into two different perspectives. One, independent of how you want to work with artificial intelligence, what are the questions that you need to ask to that provider? And then two, just sharing how we think about artificial intelligence, not from a product standpoint, but just from a philosophy standpoint. So independent of what tools you use, whether or not you're my customer, I just want to open the conversation of how I think we can approach it within ag. So, you know, as we think about artificial intelligence, um, I think the thing to think about first will be, you know, it's a data perspective. So we're sitting on a mountain of data here. We get it from n number of sources. We have our ERP, we have your precision tool, maybe you have a work order management tool. You have all the data flowing in from all your different OEMs and your different monitors, all these new soil options that we can collect like we just saw from Trace. That, it, that data inherently has value in itself, but it has much more in, insight and value when it's combined and stacked together to start deriving insights out of. So as we start to think about data and you start to work with groups from a modeling standpoint or what's the foundational model, model that they're using in artificial intelligence, you really need to ask the question of, you know, is my data segregated from everyone else or is it all getting coalesced to train and increase this model for all of the customers that that model's serving? And that to me is a really big red line and a really important question that you need to ask that group. Because right, if your data is getting combined with everyone else, well, we've seen you know the results from ChatGPT or you know whatever other source you want to use. Sometimes it can spit back garbage to you, and you don't want it spitting back anyone else's garbage to you for your own data sets. So that's a key first thing to think about as you approach that: of who owns the data, where is the model living? Is it living in my environment within my company? Is it living in the cloud, and is it the model specific to me? And there's a nice delineation here between the foundational model and then what we're training the model to advance upon with your own data sets. And as long as the model's advancing on your own data sets and training on its own data within its private cloud or private, net, private deployment of it just for you, then that's an acceptable path forward. But if you look at, let's just throw our big data into a bucket and see what we come out with, that to me is problematic and is something you really want to consider as you approach that. And so as we think about this, and yeah, I put products on there that we make, that's again, not the purpose of this. But again, you think about the story that artificial intelligence can provide as we start to aggregate these different data sets together. So if you look at each legs of the stool here, so we have an in-season offering, we have our ERP, we have logistics and hauling, and we have agronomy operations and with Fieldalytics. And so as you approach those, think about the data sets that each of those producing, yeah, like we said, have value. Maybe you have a BI dashboard on your ERP data so you can see, you know, where am I selling? What are the, what's the transactions that are interesting? That's great, but it'd be really great if you could also see then the grower's whole footprint of, of let's say they grow 1,000 acres of corn or 2,000 acres of corn. I'm only getting 1,000 of those acres back when they sell it back to me. That is a missing wallet share opportunity, and those are the types of insights that we can begin to think about as we start combining the classic precision data sets with your ERP data sets, and then potentially leveraging in some of those in-season opportunities or those hauling opportunities. And really just to call out on those in-season opportunities, we continue to see challenges from a labor challenge standpoint, product efficacy uh, standpoint within the summer of we have tight windows to execute and make these decisions on to provide more products and services to our customers. I, as a, you know, a retailer, a service provider, it's challenging for me to be able to make those decisions in season fast enough, communicate with the grower and go execute on them so we have a better outcome. And so that's the piece that we're really looking to uh, look, looking for and exploring here at EverAg is saying, you know, I think we do a pretty good job analyzing data post season. I think we've been doing that for probably 20 years at this point. We do a pretty good job of planning for the upcoming season with various planning functionality and tools. The challenge seems to be this in-season opportunity and where we can begin to leverage efficiencies that artificial intelligence can bring to us. So what insights can I wake up in the morning and as I log into whatever software I'm using, I'm just giving my list of here are the activities, here are the fields that we're concerned about. Oh, hey, this field just reached V4. I probably want to go have a fungicide conversation with the grower about that. And so those are the types of insights as we think about those in-season challenges that we want to really execute and leverage and enable our ag retail and ag server provider customers to go gain so that they're selling more products and more services. And then at the outcome, the grower's producing most likely a better crop as a result because we're taking quick action on those opportunities. And that's the piece where I really get excited about 
the piece of art or the, the the promise of artificial intelligence. I think we've all seen the efficiencies it can bring for you know rewording an email or producing some content for a PowerPoint slide. What is the next step that we're going to take there? And what gets me really excited is beginning to leverage and feather in that those spatial data sets on top of all then transactional data sets. Because we look as we look at the artificial intelligence offerings today, they're really focused on that transactional data, and there's a reason. That data is easy to work with. All of these models have been trained leveraging these types of transactional data. I throw a yield map at ChatGPT, it doesn't know what to do with it. And so how can we start to begin to leverage those insights that that yield map provides on top of all those products and services that we're providing with that? And so that's really the piece that really hones in our focus as we think about our artificial intelligence. It's less about what can I pull up from them transactional data, and it's more how can I coalesce these different data sources, both spatial, both transactional, both compliance as well, to then produce a better outcome and better crop and better services. So that's really the path that we're going down the road on. And so as we think about it, throw in a yield map, throw in an imagery layer, throw in all the products and services I sold to that grower this year. What are the new insights and outcomes that I can plan for, whether it's an in-season decision and we're thinking about you know, what potentially happened last year, what's happened so far this year, or potentially, you know, what do we want to do next year? Let's, let's use that tool for post-season analysis and spit out you know, what's the best plan that we could put together for the grower to execute on it. So again, as we approach that, Think about it from, I need to have all of the sources of data within my organization all coalesced together to train these models on top of it. If it's just one piece of the stool here of these different pieces to get that crop out for sale, um, you're really missing a key piece. And so as you think about that, think about the data privacy concerns that you want to approach with that, but also think about the opportunities that you can leverage this for more products and services. And again, we're really focused on the in-season component of this because that really seems to be our opportunity for greater efficiencies for our customers. Uh, honestly, to increase their business and increase their customers' business as well. Um, so look more for us um, over the next few months as we roll out our own um, foundational model. We partnered with AWS a few months ago to start building that. And the most exciting piece and why we picked that group is because they're allowing us to leverage all of those spatial data sets on top of that transactional data set. So we can begin to toss in yield layers, imagery layers, soil sample layers, and begin to start returning those insights back so I'm not looking at a thousand different things in fall when I also have to make a bunch of recs and it's 11 o'clock at night. So again, how can we wake up in the morning and think about what do I need to execute on today? And that's really the path that we're working for, I'm sorry, working toward and heading toward uh, this year and uh, toward future years. Um, so with that, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for listening to me and have a lovely day.